Hey guys, it's been a while since I've gotten a Promise Neverland video done, but of course I couldn't miss talking about and explaining the escape. If you know this channel, you know that I explain the Promise Neverland anime by comparing it to the things that they leave out from the manga. There's tons of details here of the escape, so let's talk about it and what's next for the kids because they aren't out of the woods yet. I want to remind you guys that you can follow me on Twitter at Vocal Pineapple, and you can also watch me stream some games on Twitch, also at Vocal Pineapple. I'm going to be streaming Once Justice and a few other games on there, so come by and have a good time. But with that said, we're going to get into talking about The Great Escape after that intro. Hit it! So a lot has been going on in the series. Crone is dead, Norman's dead, and Mama has basically had Ray and Emma locked down for two whole months. We have a scene where Emma comes to talk to Ray the night before he's supposed to be shipped out, and after a brief talk, they both realize that neither of them has actually given up on escaping. That's where we start off with this conversation between Emma and Ray. In the manga, we see things from Emma's point of view, and we actually see the detailed planning and resolve that she puts into her actions as they're flashing through the two-month period again. Emma is devastated over Norman's death, but in the moment after Norman leaves the house, she thinks about what she needs to do to not let it be in vain. Emma realizes that Isabella is going to have to control them directly now, and she knows that Isabella is going to have to be doing all of the recon on the kids by herself. She decides that she should do nothing in that time period, but Sister Crone's words about being careful of her expressions and the other things that help you lie well echoed in her head. She had to put off the perfect act for Isabella to think that her spirit was actually crushed, so that she and Ray could pretend to give up while proceeding with the escape in secret. This is where we learn that Emma actually had Don and Gilda taking care of most of the preparations for the escape, and due to that, they actually have everything they need to escape at any minute. Emma tells Ray that she thinks they should escape in the afternoon, but Ray sits her down and tells her that the best option would be for it to happen at night. He explains that they have to lock Isabella down while also making the demon scramble to give them the time and room to escape from the lands of the Gracefield house. In the manga, you actually see that it was Ray's plan to stuff the keyhole to the secret room so that Isabella couldn't call the alarm in, which makes the demons think that it's just a fire and not an actual breakout. Ray says that he's also prepared Molotov cocktails for them to throw over the walls into the other plantations to hopefully cause confusion. This is pretty much where Ray starts to reveal that he's planning on burning himself alive with the house to keep Mama there so that everyone else can escape while she tries to save his brain. It's a really genius idea by Ray, and honestly, besides the fact that he has to die for it to work, it's a perfect power play that would shake Isabella to her core. After some more talking, Ray gives Emma a book that has pictures of her and Norman, and then he throws the match on himself, causing a giant explosion of flames in the manga. In the anime, we first see the flames when Isabella comes to the door, but in the manga, the chapter actually ends with the match falling, Emma screaming, and then the giant explosion of fire in the room. For a week, everyone was horrified that Ray took himself out that way. Isabella is watching over the babies and eventually hears Emma's screams and comes to find the flames. Isabella is shook upon making it into the room and seeing the situation. She grabs Emma to question her and Emma is a crying mess, screaming that Ray is in the fire. Isabella's pupils get huge and she thinks... Is this a trap for them to run while the fire distracts her? No, it, it, it can't be. She can smell the meat and the burning stench of hair. Emma's screaming and she's uncontrollable right now. Her reaction is real. Isabella checks the watch and she sees that the signal is coming from inside the fire. This is real. Ray is actually inside of this fire. He has to be. Isabella runs for a fire extinguisher and she thinks about how she absolutely can't mess this up because the Tafari are expecting their dinner immediately. Isabella sends Gilda to take the kids out of the house and starts trying to put out the fire, but the extinguisher is pretty much empty already. Isabella realizes that Ray must have also disabled the sprinklers, so she has to open the fire hydrant, but she also has to multitask to make sure that the kids are safe too. There's so much on her plate, and she turns around to warn Emma to back away from the flames, and that's where she notices. Emma is gone. 
She gets a terrifying feeling in her stomach, I'm sure, and follows the tracker to Emma's location. Isabella is genuinely worried here, and she thinks, it can't be. Did the smoke get her too? She calls out Emma's name and walks to where the signal is. And it's in a bucket, which is strange, of course. She moves it and sees Emma's ear in the bucket, and she realizes that this is it. This is the escape that she was trying to prevent, and it's happening right now. She realizes that all the kids were wearing shoes, and we cut to Emma and them running through the forest. Ray can't believe that things have gone so smoothly, and we cut back to what actually happened 20 minutes earlier, since obviously Ray didn't actually burn himself alive. Emma catches the match and hits Ray with a quote straight from Norman. She then goes to reveal that Norman had actually planned the escape behind the scenes the entire time. Norman realized that Ray was going to sacrifice himself, so he left Emma a note detailing everything she had to do to escape. We see Norman's planning from his perspective, and we get another focus on this mysterious pen that Sister Crone left behind for the kids and the key mold. In the manga, we actually see on the pen the initials WM written on the pen. That's really important. Dawn and Gilda brought the note to Emma and she followed the plan perfectly. Ray questions how long the other kids have known about the secret behind the house and Dawn tells Ray that it was Emma's idea to tell everyone. They actually only let four kids know by letting those kids eavesdrop on the meeting between Emma, Norman, and Sister Crone earlier in the season. Eventually Tama and Lonnie found out and they were the ones that really put in the most work. Over the next two months, they told all of the children about the dark secret behind the Gracefield house, and that brings me to Phil. Anyone knows me knows that I have been hyping up Phil for this season of Promise Neverland, so it's finally time to talk about why I've been hyping him up. As the kids are escaping, Isabella laughs as she realizes that it's actually better this way in a way. If the kids are alive and they're just trying to escape, then she can just catch them and doesn't have to be worried about being punished by the demons. She laughs and gets ready to go after the kids, but that's when Phil, with a huge smile on his face, grabs her by the side and says, Mama, Isabella is stamina broken here. <laughs> what is Phil doing here? Like what? The kids are escaping. Why would Phil still be here? The tension on the screen in the anime was amazing. The production crew really just had them standing there in silence amongst flames for a second, almost making you wonder if Phil was about to kill Isabella, and that's the sort of tension that I really appreciate from this adaptation of the manga. So what is Phil doing here? Well, this is technically episode 12 content, but this video is about the entire escape, so stick around if you don't mind hearing more, or you could come back to this video next week to get more details on what's going on here. I'll give you a moment to decide. All right, so Phil stands in Mama's way as he becomes the biggest obstacle for Isabella to go and capture the escaping kids. Why? Well, we learn that the youngest kids aren't going along. We cut to a flashback of the kids discussing whether they could really all escape together, and ultimately Emma thinks about who could best help her in this situation. Emma asks, could you call Phil in here? Phil enters the room and says, Emma? And Emma tells Phil that she has something to tell him about the house and Mama. She tells him everything over the course of a minute or so, and I kid you not, with a straight face, Phil says, I see. So that's what's been going on. What? What kind of reaction is that? That reaction is why Phil is the realest character in anime this year. Because Phil is younger than five years old and he takes all of this news about the Gracefield house, about his brothers and sisters dying, about the, about the demons and the cruel world and escape attempt, and his reply is, I see. So that's what's been going on. Emma reacts to this with shock, just like Don and Gilda do, and Phil remembers that time that they played tag of Sister Crone, and Crone said something about a harvest to Emma while she was hiding. Phil says since that day, he'd been wondering about the harvest that Sister Crone mentioned, and then he saw her digging around Ray's dresser. He then got really scared about Emma's behavior during the night that Norman left, and continues to say, I see. So Norman was harvested. And Connie and everyone else, and that's why you were so. 
And it's only once Phil realizes the true reason behind why Emma was going through so much pain that he collapses onto her and they share a much deserved cry. After they feel better, Emma asks Phil bluntly, should we try to escape with everyone or should we keep some people behind? She explains how the shipments are decided by age and test scores, and she says that the closest shipment would be a year and a half away. They looked at the test scores of the four-year-olds, and apparently their test scores are good enough that they should actually live beyond six years old, so they might actually have two years left before there's actually a shipment. Phil doesn't hesitate, and he tells Emma that he'll just wait for them to come back, so it's fine for them to leave him there. Because of his calm attitude, Emma leaves Phil in charge of the Gracefield house for the next two years that she'll be away. Phil is in charge of getting everyone ready for the next escape, and he's basically the new Norman, Ray, and Emma of the house, all rolled together in one character. Isabella finds the other kids and gets them away from the fire by bringing them into the woods, but after a while, she runs off after Emma and the others, leaving the children behind. It seems like the younger kids don't actually know about what's going on, which is a benefit for their plan because their panic and crying is authentic, so they were really panicking to keep Isabella's attention because they were actually scared. Isabella runs off and warns the demons that there's been a breakout using a portable radio, and that causes them to sound the alarms in all of the farms. Farms. We see the other farms for the first time and we even see another mama in the manga who looks irritated at the fact that the alarms are going off and of course she would be because Isabella is kind of ruining it for everyone here because now all of the other mamas have to explain why there was an alarm going off and it kind of breaks the sense of immersion that they use to prey on the children which runs the risk of the other children finding out the truth about the farms. The demons decide that this must stop immediately so they send out more demons demons and they're given orders to kill any child that isn't top of the line. This means that it really is open season for the demon tier who would love to eat any of the Gracefield house kids, even the ones with the lower scores, because they're still better than the other farm's products. We see giant guard dog type demons stalking the area with huge lights searching around for where the kids might have gone. Security is tightest at the gate like one would assume because that's the only place where the kids can actually escape into the greater world. After seeing that there was a cliff on the outside of the walls, the only logical path would be to take the bridge and somehow distract the demons. Of course, when we're dealing with one of Norman's plans though, things can't quite go as expected because you've always got to be several steps ahead in the game of chess. Norman walks the walls and finds the area that has the two closest points and devises a plan for the kids to build rope anchors and throw them around the trees and zip line over using hangers. To test and make sure that it's safe and also to give courage to the smaller kids, Don, who's the biggest kid, goes over the clothesline first and makes it across without any problem. Once they confirmed that it was possible, the other kids shot bottle rockets with more cloth attached to them to make additional zip lines and the kids start zip lining to freedom as Ray just kind of stands there confused and shocked. He can't believe that the kids have all been preparing for the escape for the last two months and we cut to a bunch of small scenes of the kids doing things that looked like playing but Ray realizes that they were in fact training all along. In episode 11, there was a moment where Norman walks up to Emma as she's looking at the wall right before they escape, and it seems like Norman somehow survived. It really feels like he's there with Emma, and he's gonna escape with them. But then he disappears, and we realize that it's just one of those anime moments where the characters hallucinate and get interesting shonen protagonist speeches from ghosts. Well, we see more of that in episode 12, as Norman also says his goodbyes to Rey, much to Rey's initial shock. The two think back to their earlier conversations in the season and think about how what they're seeing right now is something that they both thought was impossible, but Emma made it possible because she's a wild card. If you remember my early videos on the series, you remember that I detailed the character's strength and weaknesses. Ray's weakness is that he's the first to give up in most given situations. He was willing to give up his life the entire time and was planning to without giving the others a chance to save him and he was the first one to start pretending to have given up after Norman's death. Norman's final message to Ray, as Ray looks over the distance and sees his family escaping, is that they don't have to give up. There's always a way forward. This will hopefully push Ray to grow and learn to adapt to situations in ways where he can win without sacrificing anything or at least minimalizing those sacrifices. In the manga, we get a really, really good monologue from Ray in his head where he thinks about fate. 
He says that they can't change their fate no matter how much they curse it, and their battle is one to the death, and they have to keep fighting it to survive. Ray thinks about how scared he was, because he didn't think that his goals or ideals were possible. Emma and the others have lit the hope in his heart that maybe those goals actually are possible. Ray reveals to us that he hopes for a dreamlike future where not a single one of the children dies, and that's the mission that Norman ultimately gives Ray. His mission is to live, but it's also to make sure that the rest of the kids live as well. By giving him this mission, Norman is basically saying, hey, you can't die if your job is to protect these kids, so figure out how to win without anyone dying. With that, we see Isabella arriving to the spot where the kids zip lined over, and as she looks deep into the forest, we see Emma and Ray looking back before they disappear into the woods. And that, folks, is the escape. The anime hasn't ended, and there's still tons of questions to be answered in the next episode as the season wraps up, but be sure to come back here on this channel because I'll be doing videos answering various questions that are left up in the air for anyone that wants to get that information. Wondering what's up with that pen that Sister Crone found and left them? Wondering what Ray told Crone to make her think that she had the ultimate trump card on Isabella? I'm going to be answering all of those questions in videos on this channel, so just be ready. For now, I appreciate you guys coming through to listen to my more detailed retelling of the escape from the promised neverland and i can't wait for the second season of this amazing show to come back so let me know that you agree by throwing a like my way and let me know what you thought about the escape and all of the crazy buildup during the course of the season in the comment section below i'll talk to you guys in the comments see you later this is vocal pineapple peace